Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you to worship those of you that are gathered here on Century Avenue. And welcome to those of you that are worshiping with us online and on YouTube. I'm Pastor Terry Elton, and I will be preaching today. We're going to continue our journey through uh, Genesis, and we're going to hear a story about wrestling with unknown forces and Jacob. And um, Pastor Liz is hosting online today, so um, great opportunity for her to be with that community. All right. With that, I invite you. Um, we are going to begin worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we will begin with the opening song, You Are Holy, number 525 in your hymnal. Trusting in God's mercy, let us make our confession before God and one another. <clears throat> Holy God, we come before you in humility, for you live as we ought. We do not love you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We do not love our neighbor as ourselves. So we pray in all humility that you will change our hearts and minds, that you will show us again how to love the way you love us, that you will put power and courage in our hearts to do your will. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for the sake of his all our forgiving of all of our sins, as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare for you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, your servant Jacob wrestled with your angel and prevailed. In honor of his persistence, you gave him a new name. Teach us to be persistent in the face of struggle and call us by name. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Share a sign of God's peace with each other. A reading from Genesis, the 32nd chapter. And then Jacob prayed, God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, 
God who told me, go back to your parents' homeland and I'll treat you well. I don't deserve all the love and loyalty you've shown me. When I left here and crossed the Jordan, I only had the clothes on my back. And now look at me, two camps. Save me, please, from the violence of my brother, my angry brother. I'm afraid he'll come and attack us all, me, the mothers, and the children. He put a servant in charge of each herd. You, you yourself said, I will treat you well. I'll make your descendants like the sand of the sea, far too many to count. He slept the night there. Then he prepared a present for his brother Esau from his possessions. 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 camels with their nursing young, 40 cows and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. He put a servant in charge of each herd and said, go ahead of me and keep a healthy space between each herd. But during the night he got up and took his two wives, his two maidservants and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He got them safely across the brook along with all his possessions. But Jacob stayed behind by himself and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he couldn't get the best of Jacob as they wrestled, he deliberately threw Jacob's hip out of joint. The man said, let me go, it's daybreak. Jacob said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. The man said, what's your name? He answered, Jacob. The man said, but no longer. Your name is no longer Jacob. For now, from now on, it's Israel, God wrestler. You've wrestled with God and you've come through. Jacob asked, and what's your name? The man said, why do you want to know my name? And then, right then and there, he blessed him. Jacob named the place Peniel, God's face, because he said, I saw God face to face and lived to tell the story. The word of God. Thanks. All right, I'd like to invite the children up. All right, so friends, have you ever gotten into a fight with maybe a brother or a sister or a friend or cousin? Yeah, yeah. Have any of those been physical fights? You don't have babies, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Hopefully you haven't gotten in any fights with anybody. Oh, mom, she wants a baby brother and a baby sister. <laughs> All right, so have you ever had those fights with people? How do you feel afterwards? Not good. Have it, has it ever been a physical fight? Did you get hurt? Yeah, no. Hmm, no, no hair pulling, no scratches. Oh, did you get an owie? Oh, you do have an owie. Yeah. How, how do owies feel? They feel good? No, okay. So in our story today, Jacob is wrestling with an unfaced uh, man. He's actually wrestling with God. But afterwards, he was hurt but he also felt better. Do you think it's okay that we fight with God? No? Do you think it's okay that we fight with God? No? You know what, I'll... Everybody argues, you're right, Gideon. And you know what? I think it's okay that sometimes we fight with God that sometimes we wrestle with our feelings and our prayers to God. And God understands that. And that's what that lesson is about today, was understanding that sometimes we need to wrestle with those emotions 
to get those feelings out and to feel better. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for our emotions. Thank you for helping us to wrestle through those. Even when it means that we're wrestling with you. In your name we pray. Amen. Many years ago, I had the opportunity to travel to Tanzania with a group from Prince of Peace in Burnsville to visit our sister congregation there. It was a powerful experience in many ways. I had never been there before, but my husband and our church had had many trips. So I was excited to go. But one particular night of that trip stands out. It was a night that I wrestled with an unknown force. So here's the context. Our group was visiting our village, uh, which was very remote, about four hours from the city of Aringa, which is where our home base was during that time. And it was the night before we were to leave the village and make our way back. Only three of us were sent out ahead, packed, myself and my husband, due to a medical emergency that Pat was experiencing. So we left the village way up in the mountains around sundown, hoping to get out of the, uh, onto the road before it got dark. And four hours later, we arrived around midnight at the hospital in Oringa. The hospital was very primitive, but we were very welcomed and excited to be in its care. After several hours of tests, however, we still had no answers, and Pat's conditions were getting worse. Around 2 a.m., my husband and the host that had met us there to kind of walk us through, they went home. I stayed with Pat in the hospital. By this time, we've exhausted all the medical resources that they had available to us at that time. And now we waited. Pat laying in a hospital bed with just two sheets that barely covered her and the mattress. And me sitting in the corner in a wheelchair, the only other piece of furniture in the room. And neither of us could speak Swahili. Pat tried to sleep through their bouts of pain that in the next coming hours. I did whatever I could to make her comfortable and to keep a very non-anxious presence. And I prayed. I prayed in between her sleeps and I would go over and check on her when she would wake. And during those times when I was praying, I brought a lot of questions to God, hard questions. You see, Pat was a widow. It hadn't been that long that summer when she and her husband were coming back from their cabin up north in Minnesota and he had a heart attack and died. She and her two adult married children had weathered that season. And I sat there wondering how I would be able to call those children and tell them that their mother had died in a hospital room halfway across the world. I couldn't imagine that. I also wondered that why, God, this is the nurse we brought on the trip for moments like this. Why is she the one in the hospital bed? And Lord, why am I the one sitting here caring for her? At some point in the night, the fear inside of me seemed to fill the room. I can't explain exactly what happened, but it was a dark and eerie force. It scared me. 
As Pat laid in the bed wrestling with fear, with her fever, trying to overtake her body, trying to breathe and trying to keep her fever down, my prayers intensified. I went over to her and I found the cool rag that I had been given and tried to put it on her head to see if it would help at all. Time seemed to stand still. Finally, at some point, she rested again. And the room became a bit more peaceful. And I returned to my chair in the corner, waiting for night to end. That was one of the scariest nights of my life. But I will also say it's not the only night of my life I've stayed up wrestling with unknown known forces or questioning God. I've spent nights, even some recently, replaying personal conflicts, wondering how could I redo my actions or make amends for whatever happened. I've spent way too many nights worrying about my future, and having it hold me hostage to what I thought was an opportunity in front of me. I've worried about what it means to trust God with my life. And the list goes on. So today I ask you, what keeps you up at night? What big questions do you wrestle with these days? What aspects of your past haunt you? What worriers create barriers for you? What deep questions about worth and meaning wake you up? People of Lutheran Church of Peace, all of us live with a mixture of conflict and blessing of trying to make peace with our past and of hoping in a new future, of asking longing questions of why and of looking for guidance. Jacob's story is just one of a person who has spent the night wrestling with an unknown force. And perhaps it's a story that we can relate to today. Now, if you drop into this text, it's in the middle of a really big family drama. I'm not gonna give it to you all, but let me give you some highlights. First of all, Jacob has a brother, Esau. They are the sons of Isaac, who are Abraham and Sarah's son, who we talked about last week. And Esau is the oldest. And being the oldest, he's the one to automatically get the family inheritance and his father's blessing. Yet with the whole crazy turn of events, Jacob convinces Esau, perhaps in a weak moment, that he should get the blessing from his father. So they go through that plot, it happens, and then guess what? Esau gets angry and he says, I'm gonna try and kill you. Good family rivalry. <laughs> so Jacob flees. 20 years later, we get this text. 20 years after he has fled, he's invited to come home to see Esau for the first time since his departure. And he sends gifts ahead. 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes, 20 rams, a whole list of things. I'm not sure what I'd do with all those things, by the way, but um, a big gift, maybe a peace offering, if you will. And then he learns that he's gonna be greeted not only by Esau, but 400 people. Here's where we find Jacob. Lots of questions. Will I be welcomed? Or will the fight escalate? Who am I? Am I part of this family? Or am I being rejected? 
Does God find favor in me? Or am I being punished? I have to wonder if he thought, is there any good that could come out of this conflict? Or is it just too late? In the story for today, Jacob wrestles not only with this unknown force, but with his own identity, with his own relationships and his family relationships, and specifically, and with God. And in the midst of this wrestling, the weirdest thing that he chooses, he asks for a blessing. The one who has already received the blessing from his father is now asking this unknown force for a blessing. And the blessing he gets is not material, but it's a new name, Israel. Now there's many ways to take that name, interpretations. One of them is grabbing your heel, which basically means struggle. One that has a life of struggle and conflict. Another interpretation is Israel means to protect, or one that has seen God and prevailed. Both of those interpretations actually are true about Jacob's past, his present, and we will soon learn his future life. Fast forward, and Jacob has 12 sons who all become the 12 tribes of Israel. You may have heard of Joseph in the Technicolor dream coat. That's the family. <laughs> and yes, their life is full of struggle and conflict. It doesn't get better from here, folks. And yet God continued to show up and prevail. You see, people who follow God are not promised an easy life, a get out of jail free card. But they are promised that God will join them in their journey and they will prevail. Our vision at Lutheran Church of Peace is to build a brave community that includes the sure, the searching, and the skeptical. We're all people on a journey. We are the sure, the searching, and the skeptical. We are the ones who need healing, who long for community, who question our identity, and who don't know how to mend our broken relationships. This is who we are here, folks. And that is who Jacob was, his family, his community. So we do not have to be afraid with coming to God with our hard questions, with our questioning of our own worth, our searching for meaning and purpose, we, those gathered here and those online, we're being brave by just showing up. And by coming as we are, not fully all together, and joining other people who are kind of also not all together. This is a messy journey, this life of faith. But God's promise to Jacob is the promise to us. God is with us on this journey, and we will prevail. God will relieve our fears, heal our wounds, and restore our hope. So I wonder if you might not be brave, not only in this space, but as you leave somewhere this week. Might you, in your own time of prayer, bring your questions to God? Might you open yourself to name fears that are living in you out loud? And might you even be brave enough to ask for a blessing on your life?
As the sun streamed into that small hospital room in Tanzania, I noticed that the window had broken glass. It was a bit of an irony to an already very crazy night. But there we were, two broken people in a country far away from home. And as the day came in through that sunlight, we had hope. The struggle was still very real. And Pat, but Pat had made it through the night. And we were ready to live another day. We were interrupted soon after that with the news that a medical airplane was on its way. And it would come to Oringa in a few hours and it would take her and my husband to the capital city of Tanzania, Dar es Salaam. I would return back and meet up with our group and return home with them in a few days. Eric and Pat would stay another week in the hospital. And then when Pat returned to Minnesota, she spent another few days in the hospital. But each step of the way, God was with her and she prevailed. This was just one of Pat's struggles in her life. But as Pat and I have talked about that day in the, in the months and years since, she has been transformed by God accompanying her in those times. And when I see Pat on every occasion, I see the face of God. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Amen. Amen. Take my hand 
Please stand and join me in our statement of belief, which is found in your bulletin, or I believe on your screen. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Let us pray for the church and for all of the nations. God, thank you for challenging us to be a brave community where the sure, searching, and skeptical can come together. Jacob's story and life of struggle reminds us that it's okay to ask hard questions and come to you with our own struggles. We ask you to meet us in our fears, comfort us in our anxiety, and bless us when we doubt our worth. Lord, in your mercy. God, thank you for the beauty of this season, a season filled with crisp mornings and red apples, with leaves changing colors and fewer hours of daylight, with football games and school schedules. We are grateful for the rain that nourishes the land and for friendships that nourish our lives. Help us soak in each day as a gift from you. Lord, in your mercy. God, you know what we need more than we ourselves do. Give rest to those who are tired, direction to those who are lost, friendship to those who are lonely, and freedom to those who feel trapped. Heal us so we may experience the fullness of life. Today, we especially pray for the Myers family as they recover from COVID. Grant them health and hold them in your peace. We pray in thanksgiving for Harper at her birthday. Grant her a happy, healthy, growth-filled year. We pray for Amy at the death of her friend, Brady. Hold Amy and all Brady's family and friends in your compassionate arms. We pray for Rob, who is going blind. Help him to never lose sight of your presence, even and especially in the darkness. We pray for Kari, who has been diagnosed with ovarian cancer. In the fear, the pain, the uncertainty of cancer, grant Kari your healing in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for Lori Engesser, stitch her broken arm together with your healing power and bring her to a speedy, painless, and complete recovery. We pray in thanksgiving for Tom, who is free of his walker. We are grateful for your boundless love and pray for Tom's continual health. We are thankful for all who share the gift of music here at LCP. Please nudge more altos and baritones to join into this fun and fulfilling ministry. 
And finally, we pray in thanksgiving for this community, for all the connections we make both here and outside these walls. Continue to bless this brave community where we can find both solace and joy in your presence, where we can clearly see your face. Be present with us, your beloved children, and open us to your healing love. Lord, in your mercy. God, you provide for all that we need. As we come now to your table and share in the meal that you gave to us, let us taste the goodness of your love and mercy in the bread and wine. Remove the sins of our lives, the obstacles that keep us from loving others as you love us and unite us in the body of Christ that you envision us to be. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Now, as we prepare to gather at God's table, hear these words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to all his disciples saying, take and eat. This is the body, my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, drink of this, all of you. This is the new covenant of my body given for you for the remembrance of forgiveness of all your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Now I invite you to join in the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. Now we invite those of you that will be community on, communing online, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Those of you that will be communing in here, we will begin on the edges. We will go from the front to the back, and then we will move to the center from the back to the front. There is both a, a regular and gluten-free on this station, just regular on this. Please um, put your empty cups in the baskets and come for all is ready.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift of faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join in our closing hymn, Blessed Assurance 638. Now may um, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.